This video is sponsored exclusively by our friends at the National Association of Catastrophe Adjusters. Become a member of NACA today at adjustertv.com slash NACA. In this Adjuster TV exclusive, I sit down with Dave Kaltenbach, president of NACA, who talks about the importance of networking, professional development, and mentorship, and how the National Association of Catastrophe Adjusters is a great way to make the most of your career as a claims professional. And here's Dave. I'm Dave Kaltenbach. I'm the uh the current president of NACA, National Association of Catastrophe Adjusters. I own 2021 Training. I've, I've run that company for uh, close to 10 years now and serving the industry. We, we've always shown up at NACA and have been a, a big part of what they do, working and, and facilitating their conferences. They invited me to the board and I, I've been sitting on the board. This is my fourth year and uh, just have been excited to see what NACA does and how they pour into the lives of adjusters. Uh, you know, specifically the independents. I mean, no adjuster is excluded from our organization, obviously, uh, but we do focus uh, currently on the, the independent adjusters. And uh, so it's been a pleasure serving on the board and, and serving this organization in a way that makes a difference for people like you guys. So a lot of people are, are curious to find NAC. It's not, it's not like one of those industries where you go out and find, let, let me find who NAC is. I mean, most people have been out in the industry it, for years, and, that, and there's a good handful of people who've never heard of who NACA is. Uh, NACA has been around for over 40 years. That's quite a legacy in history. You know, if you can imagine writing claims by hand, getting your pictures developed at the local drugstore, taping them to a sheet of paper, those were our founding members, guys. That's the, those are the people who put this together and said, you know what? We want to create a group of people who are, are quote unquote professionals, who, who want to stand above the rest and are not satisfied with just being another adjuster. You know, one thing I can tell you is in this industry, you can make money as an adjuster just being an adjuster. You don't have to belong to anything. You don't have to be anything special. You just have to show up. But there's always that group of people who want to be something professional, something more, and really, really be a part of this industry. and. and you know, kind of the head of the organization and where it goes. And uh, th those are the people that kind of started and formed NAC over 40 years ago. And uh, the legacy is carried forward. And obviously the organization has grown and shrunk depending on what natural disasters have happened. Uh, the need for adjusters, uh, you know, swells and, and shrinks depending on the natural disaster. You get a Hurricane Harvey, all of a sudden, We'll take anybody with a heartbeat that even claims they have a license and we'll, we'll give you an emergency license even. You know, and then, and then following that, you know, you might come through a time where, you know, the, the, the pool shrinks a little bit, but there's always a group of people working hard. And, I, and before I got in this industry, I never realized that. It's like, you know, you, you hear about the big events. There's a massive hailstorm that hit Dallas. Or there's a, a huge hailstorm in, in Denver. There was tornadoes in Missouri. Well, it kind of makes sense to us that we're thinking, okay, well, a lot of people got deployed and went there, right? Did you hear about the little event in Idaho that, you know, took five people to go up there and deal with that one? Simultaneously, while in Iowa, you need 25 people over there dealing with a, a tornado that went through and did some damage. Oh, and there was some flooding down on the Mississippi River that affected some people. There's so many things that you couple all that together, guys, and there's people all over this country working on claims that you just, they're not on the forefront of your mind. Once you're in the industry and you start paying attention, it makes sense. It's like, well, yeah, somebody had to address that. What role do we serve in the industry? So the carriers have adjusters. So as a, a licensed adjuster with, with your experience, you could go be a carrier adjuster, or you can choose to be independent. Independent is kind of that flexible work staff that you know when, when they don't have enough local people to come into the marketplace, they, they bring people in. That's us. We, we get to travel the world in the, in the United States and see places that you've never seen before, interact with the local people. It, it, it's, I, I think it's a lot of fun, really. I mean, just getting around and seeing people in the place where they live. And, and what's best is 99% of the time, you're the guy coming in to make things better. That, that's what your job is. You know, they, they just had a tornado rip through their town. I, I grew up in a little town of 2,000 people. When I was 14 years old, there's a tornado came, ripped through half our town. We had adjusters come to our town and, you know, what, what's their job is assess the damage, figure out how to put our lives back together. That's what they did. And that's what we do on a day-to-day -day basis, whether it be big or small. You could be running small claims where, you know, hey, the guy 
had a power outage and he lost two freezers full of crab legs and steaks that he was used to party all summer with his neighbors. Did it really bother his life? Not so much, but at the same time, was he happy to see me come by and write him a check for all his, his crab legs and steaks that he was missing out on? You know what? He high-fived me and we walked away and he was a happy person. I got to be a part of that. And that's what we do on a day-to-day -day basis when you're catastrophe adjusters. Not all stories are happy, some are sad, and you know, you, you gotta, you gotta take the good with the bad and walk through it. But at the end of the day, we enjoy helping people and doing what we do. Coupled with that then is we wanna be good at what we do. Is it okay that you go out and, and adjust a claim and you just kind of know your stuff and you, well, this is what I think needs to happen. So we're gonna, we're gonna write this up and then if it's different, let me know. Or would you rather be the guy that walks out and says, I know exactly what that is. Here, here's the best way to go about this and I can get you taken care of. We wanna be that guy, right? We, we wanna be the guy that comes in and says, I got this, this is no problem. So NACA serves a role in allowing you, if you have the initiative, to become that guy. You have to learn and invest in yourself. And that's the thing people forget. They don't wanna invest in their self. What does a professional do? They try to make themselves better. They try to have the answers to the questions. They try to be something that the other guy isn't. You know, so the biggest advice we give people is, number one, this is a business. Do something you love and, and enjoy it. Invest in yourself, because, and I say invest in yourself because it is an investment. And a lot of people ask us, well, I can go to a carrier conference for, or a IA conference for $50. Yes, you can. And you're gonna meet one company. What we've created at NACA is an environment where we've had you know 50 IA firms come to our conference and set up booths and they wanna talk to you. They're looking for adjusters who you know, like I just described, are holding themselves out as professionals. Know what they're doing, invest in themselves. So it's kind of a, a, a catch-22 in some ways, but the mere fact of you showing up to NACA lets them know that you're willing to invest in, in your career and in, in who you are. If you just call them up on the phone and keep saying, hey, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready, and you're, you're out in your back porch drinking beer just waiting for the world to come to you, it's not gonna happen. They're gonna take the guy who they saw face to face somewhere, shook their hand, have a th had a 20 minute conversation with and said, you know what, I remember, I remember John, I remember Sue, I'm, I'm gonna get them on this next deployment. They seemed like they could handle themselves and you know, they may not be the, the best adjuster yet, but I think we could work with them. They look like they're willing to learn. We're a family of people and uh, you know, the, the, the joy that I have is the first night of our conference, it's a family reunion. I mean, the people are greeting each other in the hall, giving them big hugs and saying, hey, where have you been? What have you been doing? And they're family, they talk to each other. They know what's going on with each other. And the good news is at NACA, we want you to be a part of that. I've known so many people who have walked up to the convention, met people and had claims in their, in their inbox before they left the convention. How crazy is that? I mean, it's, they, they paid for their convention and then some in the first three or four claims. And a lot of people get caught up and I, I understand if you don't have money to invest in yourself. How long does it take you to write three or four claims? Does it take you a day? Does it take you two days? Either way, in the grand scheme of life, it's not that much, right? If I could take that and show up at a conference, talk with 50 IA firms or go talk to the 10 that I've been trying to, to get in with or the, the one guy that I can't get his attention, I call him on the phone, he won't, you know, they're busy. They don't have time to call me back. But you know what? He's sitting right at a booth. I can walk up, shake his hand, say, hey, you remember me? You have a chance. And that's what we're creating in NACA. We're creating a education that makes a difference. Uh, we're looking at ways to make you a better adjuster. And how do we make you a better adjuster? We make you more informed. We make you more educated. Uh, we give you more, more legs to stand on. If, you, if you're a one hit wonder and all you can do is a flood claim, that's great, but at the same time, what are you missing out on? What do you not know how to do that you could figure out and, you know, that you could learn from? Can you come take a class and learn how to write claims on your iPad? I'm not saying you have to, but at least come to the convention and, and go to a class and, and see what people are talking about, see what people are doing. Talk to the guy that wrote 400 claims last year doing it that way. What does he think about it? He's the one that's going to tell you the truth. Hey, you know, you give up here, you give up there, and, but at the end of the day, I came out way ahead. Yeah, the convention's a great place to, to keep building legs on the table. I mean, the, the more legs you have on your table, the more stable it is, right? If you have one leg, you, you better balance that thing perfectly. So if you're a flood adjuster and that's all you do, you can hold that table up if you do it just right, can't you?
But what if you start adding a second leg? It's easier to stabilize. Well, I, I, can do, I can do hail claims and I can do flood. You keep filling that toolbox and adding legs to the table. Next thing you know, you have eight legs on the table. Hey, load anything you want on that thing. It's not falling over, right? You know, the conference really, really allows you opportunities. And it may not be the end all education process for you, but we will bring you stuff to, to open your eyes to where it's going. We'll bring you the people who are, are doing this stuff. We're getting more carriers involved with what we're doing. So you get the carriers there, the IA firms there, and the adjusters there. What, what else are you missing in the equation? And that's, that's really what NACA is trying to facilitate, guys. Is there going to be a need for an insurance adjuster? I've heard that ever since I, I've been around this industry. Technology's changing. You're going to be, you know, you're replaced by a robot. Carriers, they have a fixed profit margin. It's the most beautiful business in the world. So what do they get to do? They get to say, well, here's what I made last year and it didn't cover my expenses. They go to the insurance commissioners. They, they raise policy rates. Guess what? They get their profit. The whole concept of they can't they can't afford to send me out as a you know three hundred and four hundred dollar line item or even an eight hundred dollar line item on certain claims because they can't afford it. That's not true. They can't afford anything they want to afford or can justify affording. What they can't afford is somebody who doesn't know what they're doing goes out and creates a mess for them and then creates thousands of dollars of litigation and issues after they walk out to the homeowner, they can't afford that. And that's where you see the pendulum swings. And they, you know, then you know, with all the good adjusters gone, you know, they get to an age where, hey, we're, we're, we're hanging up our tool belts and we're, we're just gonna sail off into the sunset. If nobody replaces them, then what happens? You get somebody who doesn't have that professionalism going out there, um, then the, the carriers start looking, well, how else can we service this customer? So it's not an issue of technology. Technology is always going to change. And I suggest that you adapt and use it where we can. I mean, think of something simple. We, we've always had tape measures, right? That's how we go in and measure a room that we're in. You go into a high-end home. Do you think they want you dragging your tape measure over their $3,000 couch and their, their hutch over there that you're knocking with your metal tape measure? And I can promise you they're looking at it. They're saying he's going to nick that thing with that. And they're, you know, the moment you walk out of that room, they're going to walk over and they're like, that scratch wasn't there before. They, they're just going to be wrenched in a knot, not because they're bad people. They just can't help it, guys. <laughs> so if I can sit there with my laser and, and measure across the room and they're just all smiles saying, OK, that's, we're, we're good. There's things to learn that will make you a better person out there. And uh, if you're opposed to doing that, you will get lost in this industry. There will be a time where your service is no longer needed. Am I, am I smart enough to recognize when there's a better mousetrap built? And, Hey, that, that, that makes sense. Or am I closed minded? Every question we ask ourselves is how does this serve you? How does this make you more of a professional? And that's really the heart of the organization, the people on the board. Um, I, I can tell you honestly, have given hundreds of hours worrying about that one question of how do we create a better adjuster? How do we make you more of a professional? And if you want to be a part of an organization and support that, um, you know, we, we'd love to have you. And, and more than that, we'd love your participation, not just, not just show up at a conference, but uh, you know, we, we have positions on committees. We you know, run for the board, be a part of the board and, uh, and serve that way. Uh, it's a great way to get to know people. So many people lose the idea of networking. It's easy to slip into that. You know, they hand me claims in my inbox. I go out, I do my job, I come back. I don't need to talk to people. They'll use you if you, if you do a good job. But what can your career be if you network and market with people? Sell your business to them. Don't be afraid to walk up to somebody and say, hey, I'm Dave. I, I live in Nebraska and I, you know, I'd be more than happy to cover claims in this area. Do you guys do any claim? Do you have any carriers who have policies there? Those are the conversations to have. Where are you willing to go plant yourself? I've known people who have gone and moved to locations where you know, their people are saying, hey, we really don't have people up here that are competent that can do these claims up here. If you want to move up to, to Idaho, come on. You want to move to Montana? Come on out here because we'll keep you busy. Wouldn't that be nice to know? How would you find that out if you don't talk to people? It may be the place that you wanted to retire. You could go out and build your retirement home, have these IA firms paying you to build your retirement home. At the same time, it, it could just be the match made in heaven. Put yourself out there in those positions where you can have those conversations. 
And I promise you, they're interested. What is everybody looking for? They're looking for competent adjusters. They'll never go out of style. They'll never, they'll never be replaced by a machine. Think of it as a homeowner. It's, you know, remember I told you they have a fixed profit margin at the carrier level. They're willing to spend whatever they need to spend to have that happy customer. First question they always ask at the, at the end of a claim is, were you, happy, were you happy with blah, blah, blah insurance? Would you recommend it to a friend? We want you to say yes, we want you to be happy so bad. Your job is never gonna go out of style. You're gonna be the friendly handshake, you're gonna be the smile, you're gonna be the person out there making them feel comfortable so when they're asked that question, would you recommend our company to your friends? Well, yeah, John was great. I mean, he was, <laughs> he took care of it. I didn't have to worry about it. That's what they want. That's what the carriers want for you. So as an adjuster, is my job ever gonna be replaced? No. May it look a little bit different than it did 10 years ago? Probably. But we understand right, your number one job in this industry is customer service. So mentorship, that's another thing that NACA is, is really heavy on. And uh, obviously over the last 40 years, a lot of that's happened impromptu. You go to the conference, hey, I'm, I'm from Jacksonville, Florida. Oh, me too. And you meet some guy who's been adjusting for 20 years in your backyard, strike up a conversation with him, start a friendship with him. Hey, do you mind if I go ride with you back home when you're, when you're doing a few of your claims? Sure, uh, you know, we'll hook up and do that. We can give you the best education in the world and it really doesn't sink into that core of yours until you're out there and you've seen it and you've done it yourself. I get the idea, the deer in the head, like the scared to death feeling of, I got a claim, what am I gonna do with it? And uh, wait, there's like four more. I got, what am, I don't even know how to do this one. What am I gonna do? They all know it's your first time. They know you have the same questions they had. They're not embarrassed about it as, and neither should you be. But at the same time, having that buddy to call first before you call up the food chain and say, hey, I'm lost. I know you really trusted me and everything that you <laughs> have in front of you to, to treat this the most professional way, right? I'm scared, I don't have a clue what I'm doing. So NACA has, has created a mentorship program. We have plenty of people who are willing to help those who are really serious. If you go home, you learn Xactimate. You go home and, you know, we, at 2021 training, we have a, a, a class called Practical Adjusting. It walks you through step to step of, you know, what is a deployment? So there is a hurricane, what to expect? When, when do they call you? What's standby mean and where, you know, what do you mean they'll they'll actually send me to florida without having the hurricane even hit yet they might send me back home with no claims yeah it's part of the gig it's uh it, it's what happens how do you answer those questions when are you ready available what kind of tools do i need you know so we have a class that walks you through even how to adjust your first claim how, how do you do your contact information there's a lot of wonderful people in this industry there's a lot of wonderful people in NACA that are willing to do anything in their power to make your life successful in adjusting but they want to know that you're you're part of the game they don't want an observer they want somebody who's proactive i remember showing up to new york and uh, you know they had oil burning heaters I've never been in an area where they had oil burning heaters. What did I do? I went and looked stuff up. I figured it out. It's like, you know, there's an oil tank somewhere on their property. Where do they normally keep it? Is it in the basement? Is it a tank on the side of their house? Is it buried? The answer is yes to all those questions. Do you want to be the guy that, you know, walks out? <laughs> How does the homeowner feel when, you know, first thing out of your mouth, never seen one of those before. His confidence level went from 88% because he's still skeptical, people are skeptical, probably down to about 2%. As large as this country is, as big as this insurance industry is, for the independent adjusters, you're gonna run into people over and over and over again. It's a small family, guys. Don't burn bridges, hold yourself professional. If you don't like something, smile, walk away and say, you know what, I'm not gonna be a part of that side, that's fine, nothing wrong with that. But to walk away, light the, light the match, burn the bridge and walk away and say, look, these guys are horrific and they're awful and I just blazed out of there and you know, I want the world to know. Don't do it. The way you handle yourself on Facebook. What's one of the first things we do when we meet people? Let's go see what they're saying out there. There's people out there, I, I look at their posts and I'm like, I'd never hire them if I knew who they were. You know, he, uh, and all I see is their posts. You're, 
your perception of your professionalism is laid right out there in black and white and it's it's not going away guys i mean <laughs> once you blow up and and say stuff out there it's it's forever there so think about your professionalism how do you present yourself online it's not your fault if you ask a professional question and, and people jump on the train and try to make you feel like an idiot and the, the conversation goes into a deep dark well that you're like, wow, I never thought it'd go there. Walk away from the conversation, maintain yourself. We see how you act online. How are you gonna act in front of the customer? When you run enough claims, you'll run into that 1% of people that just had a bad day. They're gonna rail on you in some profound, bizarre way that you're like, wow, I didn't know you could treat a human being like that. They're not treating you as a person like that, they're treating the company. They, they have an issue with the carrier, and you don't know the conversations that always happened before you. I've been on claims that have handed to me where you know they had an adjuster go out and do a less than professional job, end up in a cussing match with the customer, and guess what? Somebody still has to handle the claim. You always see those and your, your heart sinks a little bit, I promise you. If you're a normal person, your, your heart's gonna sink a little bit. I've gotta go clean up somebody else's mess. Don't be a mess maker out there. They always end up okay if you, if you treat them right. You can bring them back around, but it takes a lot more work. I'm, I'm just excited where NAC is going and where NAC is heading. It's not a stale organization in any way. There's life, there's, there's new people around. Um, the, the past presidents are, are my most favorite people in this organization. They're full of wisdom. They have a, a, a heart to help people. I had fun going to the conventions helping and they said, hey, we want you to be on the board. But you don't make those commitments without having a heart to help people. I found them to be in parallel with my business objectives and goals of helping people without question every time in serving the community. Register early. Uh, for members, the lowest cost we have this year is $299 for the conference. I've never seen conference prices that low. Don't wait till the end. If you're a non-member and you wait till the very end, I believe it's uh, $979 or something like that. And that doesn't discount anything from it being worth it because I promise you it is. We're excited about the conference this year. Coronavirus has thrown a, a monkey wrench in a lot of people's lives. Um, at NACA, we're still going full steam ahead with everything that we got planned unless the government tells us otherwise, but uh, make plans accordingly. Come out, get registered, and be a part of this year's convention. It's gonna be amazing. We're gonna have a lot of great people there for you to meet. We're gonna have a lot of great education for you guys to come be a part of. But number one, come network. Be a professional. Hold yourself out as a professional because number one, you took the time to be educated before you showed up. Number two, you made the effort to be here Number three, you're worth it. Come be a part of something that's gonna make you a better person and a better adjuster. I promise you, your family's gonna appreciate it, your self-esteem will appreciate it, and you'll just be, you'll be a contributor to society in a way that you may never have thought was possible. It, it's just a joy to go out and help people in the time of need. And we get paid for it, guys. It's amazing. So come be a part of the convention this year. Head on over to adjustertv.com slash NACA now to learn more about the benefits of being a part of this vital organization. And as always, thank you so much for watching and have a great storm. Yeah.